Well, if you've listened to the show at all over the past few months, you know that I've been at war with the former penal colony that is Australia, which has transformed in recent years into the uh, single weakest and lamest hellscape on the planet, much as it pains me to say. It doesn't pain me at all to say, but, you know, I'm just trying to be nice. This is a country that literally has a minister of men's behavior change. Someone recently got attacked by a violent octopus on one of their beaches. Poisonous spiders are falling from the sky. They just had a major federal court decision clocking in at around 5,000 words where they couldn't decide what a woman is. And of course, as I've said many times, most recently in response to the catastrophe that is Alone Australia, their uh, TV show, their, their television programs are a crime against humanity. But even after calling out Australia as extensively as I have, being one of the only people in conservative media that's following this story about Australia being lame uh, as closely as I am, today I feel compelled, obligated even, to speak up and trash Australia once more. And that's because I learned this week that Australia is currently in the process of butchering one of my favorite comedies of all time, uh, which is The Office. At least my favorite com- one of my favorite comedies of all time is The Office seasons one through four. And the rest of the office doesn't exist in my, in, in my world. Um, but Australia is doing a remake. And I use that term very liberally to be uh, very clear about this. The point of this remake is not to be funny or amusing in any way. The point is to make a political statement. They want to push their ideology while also destroying the original show, show by association to the extent that they can. So if you can bear it, here's part of the trailer to give you an idea of what they're planning to do uh, to the office. Here it is. Big announcement. Can I have a drum roll, please? The drum roll, Lloyd. That's your drum roll. People ask me, how can I become a great boss? And the answer is having a happy staff that love you. Oof. This is a proper HR nightmare. As of today, we are all back in the office full time. What? Mm? That's not good news. I'm promoting you to productivity manager. Yes, sir. Do I want to support the vision of my branch manager? At all costs. Is this the dark web? No, it's not the dark web. You said Lizzie? Okay. The perks of coming to work. Riling up Lizzie. Flirting. Watching Nick rile up Lizzie. What's his name? My crow's name is Russell. Hello, Rusty. How are you, mate? Nick, no. <laughs> <laughs> We lost one of our own last week. Brian died. We were so close. He's always in my heart. Oh, is he the tall, sad one? Yeah. No, he was the short and smiley one. Yeah, that's what I meant. What nationality is he? Uh, what sexual identity is he? Doesn't feel relevant, does it? Hannah is a riddle, swallowed by an idiot and up by a moron. <laughs> Promoting women into <laughs> positions of power. That's my mantra, really. I've never heard you say that. Oh, my back hurts from carrying all my sisters <laughs> all the time. Ow! So the guy says, this is a proper HR nightmare. And then the trailer is just one banal, seemingly HR approved scenario after another. He gets the crow's name wrong. That's pretty funny. And then the crow flies around, a little bit of slapstick. And the boss lady doesn't know anything about the employee who just died. And then she says uh, that she likes promoting women to positions of authority. And normally, when you're making a trailer for a comedy, one of the goals, uh, I mean, really the, the only goal, actually, is to include something funny. Uh, you know, maybe a joke or two. You, just, you might want to throw in there, mix it in a bit. Or maybe you can include a vaguely funny scenario, at least, so that people can imagine that funny things are about to happen. I can speak with some authority on this, not just because we just released a, a trailer for Am I Racist, but and you know, we're, we're releasing a trailer for a comedy, and so we, we spend some time talking about Oh, you know, what are the funny moments we want to put in the trailer? We definitely want to have some funny moments in the trailer. But I also speak with authority because I'm a human being with a brain and common sense. And um, it's a low bar for a comedy trailer to clear. But, but, but generally, you know, it, it gets cleared. That was not the case here. This two-minute long trailer for the Australian reboot of The Office does not contain a single joke or humorous situation. They had an entire season of material to harvest. And they couldn't find a single moment of real comedy. It also doesn't set up any potentially funny situations. Instead, it does the opposite. It sets up another rehash of the same kind of woke progressive moralizing that we're all very familiar with at this point. The reference to sexual identity is a 
Pretty big clue that this production isn't going to mock any of the insanity that's taken hold in workplaces since the American version of The Office went off the air. Instead, it's going to reinforce it. As Steve Carell himself put it several years ago, this is a trap that any modern remake of The Office was always going to fall into. Uh, e! Online reported in 2018 that, quote, Steve Carell says The Office revival won't work because its humor is completely wrong-minded today. Here's what Carell said, quote, Apart from the fact that I just don't think that's a good idea, it might be impossible to do that show today and have people accept it the way that it was accepted 10 years ago. The climate's different now. I mean, the whole idea of the character, Michael Scott, so much of it was predicated on inappropriate behavior. He's certainly not a model boss. A lot of what is depicted on that show is completely wrong-minded. That's the point. But I just don't know how that would fly now. There's a very high awareness of offensive things today, which is good for sure. But at the same time, when you take a character like that too literally, it doesn't really work. So Steve Carell gets it mostly right. Of course, not in entirely right, because he still has to qualify that, yeah, people are oversensitive today, but it's good. It's totally good. I'm not criticizing them. Which, you know, the, the irony here is that Steve Carell himself would never appear in the office today. He, he wouldn't do it because he also is woke and lame now. Um, there's just no way that the entertainment industry as it exists today could create anything as funny as the, 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 that version of The Office that he worked on. Not the original version, of course, but you know, the actual original version, the UK version, this is even more the case. Like you de <laughs> they definitely, you're not going to find that on network TV today. Um, and that's not a good thing, as he claims. It's why so much comedy is garbage now. All right, folks, let's talk about something that you should keep, uh, that should keep you up at night. The left's insatiable appetite for your hard-earned money. With these massive tax hikes being proposed in Washington, we're looking at almost 40% top income tax rate, a 7% increase to the corporate tax, and get this, a capital gains tax on unrealized gains. Oh, and they want to add almost $2 trillion to an already staggering $2 trillion deficit. This is madness. Now, you might be thinking it's time to get more of your savings tax sheltered and inflation sheltered. This is where Birch Gold Group comes in. These are folks I trust, and they can help you convert your IRA or 401k into a gold IRA. The best part, you don't pay a dime out of pocket. Here's what you got to do. Text Walsh to 989898. You'll get a free info kit on gold. And if you act before September 30th, you'll be eligible for a limited edition 24 karat gold-plated truth bomb on qualifying purchases. In a time of high taxes and high inflation, protect your savings with gold from Birch Gold. Text Walsh to the number 989898. For your free info kit today, that's Walsh to 989898. Now, here's just one example. I mean, you could pull, pull a million examples. Just one example of a scene from the original show or the, the original American show that um, they could never do now. Watch. How are you? I just have the longest meeting. Oh, welcome to my convenience store. Would you like some googie googie? Oh, I have some very delicious googie googie. Only 99 cents plus tax. Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my googie googie. Try my. Now, no one watching the scene at the time thought, "Wow, that's 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 so bigoted." Steve Carell should be canceled. This shows a it's a white supremacist dog whistle. It's problematic. Instead, they laugh because Steve Carell's character is a clueless idiot, and uh, that's the whole point. And then they moved on with their lives. But this kind of humor isn't allowed anymore, at least not in the mainstream, because it'll be, you know, a poo from the Simpsons situation all over again. And we may remember that, that character, that there was a whole documentary about how, um, how problematic a poo was. And then they apologized and got rid of the character from that show. And so, you know, this is what you get. And now we get safe jokes about sexual identity and that sort of thing. But the bigger red flag in that trailer is that they've gender swapped the Michael Scott and Dwight Schrute characters who are women now. Yet the characters, as we can tell from the trailer, are still supposed to retain all of the comedic traits of Michael and Dwight. Um, but it doesn't land. Like it is possible to create compelling female characters, even funny female characters, but not when they are pale imitations of beloved male characters which is how this sort of thing almost always works. It's why it's almost always lame. You know, when, when we see a remake and you see a bunch of women in, the, in the, the lead roles, everybody kind of rolls their eyes now. And, and then we're accused of being sexist, but it's only because we've seen this. this is like, it always goes this way. You, you take characters that are supposed to be male with their male, with their kind of distinctly male traits, and you just throw a woman in there and it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. 
uh, Michael and Dwight in the American office. The, the, it's a distinctly male kind of humor. They are male characters and their character traits, the funny things about them only make sense and are certainly funnier coming from men. It's just, that's it. This is a trend that's so common now that the South, that South Park did a whole special called Joining the Pandaverse last year. Um, that's the one where they transformed the South Park characters into a diverse cast of strong, independent women. And Cartman, as Kathleen Kennedy of Lucasfilm, demands that everything become lame and gay. Uh, watch. Is there a problem, people? No problem at all, Mrs. Kennedy. We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a chick in it! Make her gay! Uh, yes, Miss Kennedy, uh, some of the execs are just expressing that maybe... Well, well, that maybe we should go a different route than we did with Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, put a chicken in it and make it lame and gay! Any diverse woman in it, make it lame! But, Mrs. Kennedy, ba Bambi's a baby deer! Baby deer, put a chicken in it, make her gay! There you are, Miss Kennedy, the linguine and clam sauce. Uh, excuse me, I believe I asked you to put a chicken in it and make her gay? Uh, yes, the chef was a little confused what you meant by that. It means put a chick in the linguine and make her gay! And I want it lame! So that one clip is guaranteed to be funnier than the entirety of the Australian remake of The Office. And you could tell that because unlike the Australian remake of The Office, it doesn't seem like a skit that was produced by the HR department of a Fortune 500 company. And it's getting at something we all know is happening, and not just with Disney. There are too many examples to count. There was the disastrous Ghostbusters remake where they made the Ghostbusters a bunch of strong, independent women. Nobody wanted to watch that. There was also the What Men Want, the remake of the 2000 film What Women Want, um, which didn't go over well with audiences or critics, and they gender swapped the other way. The Verge, a left-wing publication that probably wanted to like the film, wrote that the gender swap had muddled the film's plot. There was also The Hustle, which was a gender swap remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, which had very similar problems. The Atlantic, another left-wing publication that you'd think would be sympathetic to this stuff, panned the film as, quote, a lazy gender swap. They wrote that it was, quote, not merely uninspired, but sub-inspired, de-inspired, anti-inspired. It feels at times like the consummation of some wicked dare. It also works as a good summary of this new Australian remake of The Office. That's because all these lazy gender swap projects are the same. They're driven by ideology instead of charm or passion. They're not edgy or provocative at all. They come across as a mandatory diversity training video that you'd be forced to click through at work instead of an actual piece of entertainment that's intended to make you laugh. And that's why the trailer for this doomed remake of The Office didn't include a single joke. When activists pretend to be entertainers, they just can't help themselves. All they do is destroy. They can't create. And right now they're doing everything they can to destroy uh, one of the best comedies that ever aired on television, for four seasons anyway. But the truth is that The Office is a comedy that's worth rewatching, not remaking. And that is why the Australian remake of The Office, along with the entire country of Australia, once again, is today canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.